Hello coin collectors out there. Look what came in the mail today. The Macmillan Encyclopedic Dictionary of Numismatics. The new landmark reference to the terms and concepts of world coins. Now I opened it up and this book was first checked out in 1991. Most recently checked out in 2008 at which time the library probably pulled it, put it up on Amazon and late night Dylan ended up buying it. He probably forgot he bought it, but then it showed up. And we've got a lot of cool references in here. Um, and I'm going to share some of them with you. And we're going to get into these coins right here. Let's first talk about the first reference that I had uh, bookmarked or earmarked in here. Let me set up my stand and get these coins out in front of you. So these are going to be the main focus of the video, but we're going to uh, talk about a term from this book first before we get started in today's video. So the term is uh, radar note. So a radar note is a bill on which serial number reads the same both forwards and backwards, forming a palindrome. An example of a radar serial number of United States bill is 4097794 with American printing and numbering practice what it is, such a note appears roughly one every 10,000 times. I'll repeat that again. Roughly one out of every 10,000 times. The ratio, the ratio of radar notes uh, to ordinary notes varies throughout the world, but as they always command a premium among collectors. Contrary to the opinion of some hobbyists, they are not errors, but, perf but perfectly printed notes uh, whose numbers happen to read in an unusual way. A note numbered 4097704 is no rarer than one numbered uh, the same but one higher, uh, merely more interesting to the general collector. Radar is itself a palindrome, hence the term. So radar, the same forward as backwards, um, is also a palindrome. So that's a radar note. You might have heard that term before on one of my videos talking about uh, notes. And so I'll try and give you some more terms from that book to kind of keep, keep you guys educated. Um, but today's video uh, is going to be about these coins right here. So let's get into this video. So I first dug out this coin right here, which is a 2002 nickel. As you can see, it's completely black. If you scraped it up, you could probably uh, see back to its original color. But I thought that was very interesting. So it led me on kind of a loophole of other kind of a rabbit hole I should say of other weird colored coins that I had set aside so I pulled out this one right here which I think at one point was a nickel we can see Monticello uh, reverse but then it got painted pink or painted black at some point and then I found this one right here which had some red marker um, kind of coloring over it. So that led me to doing some Google searches to try and figure out what exactly was going on with this coin. And then I ultimately uh, ended up on a uh, website that explained four good reasons why some quarters are painted red. So that's what I'm going to share with you. Now I know this isn't a quarter right here, um, but it's painted red. And so there are actually some good reasons that you might find a coin that is painted red. Now, the most interesting of them all, I think, is that uh, some qu quarters were painted red as a sign of defiance, according uh, to some websites. Uh, the red coins were painted as part of a campaign in the 1970s to protest New Jersey's official decision to increase the toll on the Garden State Partway Parkway from 15 cents to a quarter. So to protest that, people painted their quarters red and then used that at the toll booths. I think that's pretty interesting. Other reasons why they might be painted red, uh, they're old test coins. In the past, repairmen uh, used them to check out coin-operated payphones, vending machines, and laundromat washers. They were fixing in order to avoid being accused of stealing. So that makes sense as well. Uh, they were house money. Red quarters are sometimes used by business owners as perks. They give them to their preferred customers for free plays on the coin-operated pool tables, pinball machines, and video games. Red quarters were also used by waitresses to prime otherwise quiet jukeboxes in order to encourage other patrons to add their quarters to keep the music coming. 
And one last final one uh, is they were used uh, for free laundry. Uh, for some apartment managers, free laundry is apparently a fringe benefit. Uh, so launder landowners uh, will often give their building supervisors red quarters uh, for use in apartment laundromats. The managers would get the quarters back when the owner or laundromat vendor removed the cash from the machine. So those are some good reasons why your quarter might be red, why your quarter or coin is black like this. I do not have any good reasons for that. This one right here just had a very rough time as a coin. But now that I've got you here and that you're still watching, I figured you might want to know some other information about this 2002 dime right here. That kind of started my quest uh, to find out information about these multicolored coins. So 2002. Uh, the mintages for 2002, super high, over a billion made. Uh, there were 1.3 billion made at the Denver, 1.8, 1. 1. excuse me, 1.18 million made at the Philadelphia. There are also over 2 million proof coins made that will have the S mint mark on them. Now, the lowest minted coin for the 2000s until today uh, was 2009. You guys probably know uh, 2009 nickels and quarters and dimes as well are are relatively low mintage due to the kind of economic downturn that the u.s started in 2008 so as a cost-cutting measure the mint cut back on production of coins because people were spending less money and it would cost them less money to produce so in 2009 there were 49.5 million dimes made at the Denver Mint, 96.5 million made at the Philadelphia Mint, and only 1.4 million uh, proof coins made at the San Francisco Mint. So they really cut back on the Denver and the Philly, cut back slightly on the San Francisco, but probably not too much. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you enjoyed a quick sneak peek at this book that I got. I'm not sure how much I'll use it. Most of the terms that are actually in this book you can find online probably much easier and much updated. So uh, I wouldn't really recommend going out and buying an encyclopedia of coin collecting terms if you know how to use the internet already. But if you're like me and you just want to buy stuff online sometimes and you happen to buy coin collecting encyclopedias, then hey, go for it. Have a good time. Support someone who's a coin collector who's selling it online. All right, everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you're into coin collecting, please do like, comment, subscribe. Check out some of the other videos on the channel. Take care, everyone, and have a great day. Enjoy.